Sound the alarms, chat, because Mu V Max is finally dead. The upcoming Pokemon trading card game set, Battle Region, is due out February 25th, and it looks incredibly exciting. We've got the first Pokemon trading cards featuring new Hisuian Pokemon, as well as new character rares, new Pokemon V-Star, and a new shiny Pokemon mechanic, Sparkling Pokemon, which are so cool, you can only play one of them in your deck. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing all of the cards revealed from Japan's Battle Region set, which will become a part of our upcoming set sometime in May, so it's going to be a little while until we get them. I'm going to talk about the cards in the context of standard format and gym leader challenge format. If you're unfamiliar with gym leader challenge format, it's basically a single prize singleton format. It's a lot of fun. All the rules are available on gymleaderchallenge.com. Now let's get to the review. The new battle region, or is it battle legion? I don't know. Depends on who you ask. The new sword and shield set, 9A battle region, has just been revealed by the Japanese Pokemon TCG website. The set's associated Lucario V-Star and Darkrai V-Star decks have also been revealed. Both the set and the decks will release in Japan next Friday. This will be the first set to feature new Pokemon from Hisui, such as Cleavor, Weirdeer, and the Starter Evolutions. Many or all of the cards from the set will join those from Time Gazer and Space Juggler to become part of our Astral Radiance set, which releases internationally on May 27th. So we've got a little while until these cards hit the shelves in a store near you, unless you live in Japan. But I'm going to be doing an opening of this Japanese Pokemon trading card game set battle region at the end of February or the beginning of March, whenever it gets here. And I'm very stoked about that. We're going to be proxying up those decks, or I guess not proxying up the decks. We're going to be building the decks out of the cards that we open and actually playing them here on the channel pretty far in advance. So I'm really stoked about that. Stoked to show off the new Lucario V-Star, Darkrai V-Star, and some of the other really cool cards that we've got released in this set. It says that... The set should now be called Battle Region instead of Battle Legion. Without context, the Japanese name can be translated either way. But now, the set's Chinese name has revealed Region is the intended translation. That's really interesting. Battle Region is probably referencing Hisui and the fact that it's a region full of Pokemon ready to kick your butt. As posted before, Battle Region is introduces a new type of Pokemon card called Sparkling Pokemon. They are shiny Pokemon with sparkling in their name. Since they are powerful basic Pokemon, you can only include one in your deck. Kind of like the old Gold Star Pokemon from back during the early EX era in the mid-2000s. Here we've got the Sparkling Greninja. It's also shiny, as you can see. Sparkling Halucha and the sparkling heatran easily my favorite of the sparkling pokemon just look at him look how handsome he is he's beautiful and he's quite good as well sparkling pokemon have the special texture associated with secret rares they also feature a new reverse hollow pattern that looks like cross hatching they use a new k rarity which likely stands for their japanese name kaga yaku the secret rare cards will be revealed by next week, so stay tuned. As we previously reported, the set will feature new character rares and character super rares. This Starmie is incredible. Absolutely love it. Misty on the float. Looks like she's enjoying a nice little luncheon on another float. Starmie, the flowers, the beach ball, everything. Absolutely gorgeous card. Cynthia with Garchomp. Stars in the background, night sky scene, completely gorgeous. I mean, I love that Pokemon is doing more character rares. It really is amazing to see. These are some of the most beautiful cards produced in any card game easily. Cleavor and uh, whoever that 
you know, Young Buck is from the RCS game. I forget his name. All right, Battle Legion will also debut a new reverse hollow style featuring glittery Pokeballs. Thank goodness. I was quite tired of whatever sort of reverse hollow pattern they'd been doing. This looks awesome. I love this. This is actually so neat that I could see myself playing with reverse hollows because uh, it just looks really slick. Definitely love that. Battle Region is a special strengthening expansion set like 2020's Legendary Heartbeat, which introduced amazing rares. Each booster pack will contain six cards instead of the usual five and cost 260 yen instead of 165 yen. And we've got all of the beautiful new cards, you know, Kamiya artwork on the gloom. Love it. It looks so good. Roselia, I know Natalie is stoked about the new Roselia artwork. Beautiful, beautiful card. Some really cool stuff in here that I'm excited to go over. So let's take a look at the translations. We've also got the Lucario V-Star deck, as I said earlier. So it looks like in order to get these decks proxied up and uh, ready for tabletop, I am going to have to get a bunch of booster boxes of Battle Region, as well as some of the Lucario V-Star and Darkrai V-Star decks, as it looks like Darkrai V-Star and Lucario V-Star are not actually in the main set. So during the Battle Region opening, I'll probably be opening a number of these V-Star decks as well, because I'm going to need these cards to show off on tabletop. Thankfully, Baiyi.jp has uh, sponsored my Battle Region opening, so I'm very, very much looking forward to that and thankful for that sponsorship because it's going to allow me to uh, to get all the cards that I need to show off these decks on tabletop in the weeks to come. Taking a look through the Battle Region translations, this Vileplume is pretty dope. It's got 150 hit points, and its first attack, Mega Drain, does 50 damage, heals 30 damage from this Pokemon. And then Allergy Storm does 90 damage, and you flip a coin. If heads, your opponent can't play any supporter cards from their hand during their next turn. Cool, but wait, there's more. If tails, your opponent can't play any item cards from their hand during their next turn. Voloplume has a long history of item locking so it's cool to see that resurface with this card it supporter locks it item locks it does 90 damage it's a pretty neat card probably never going to be playable in standard format but in gym leader challenge you never know pretty interesting attack for sure and the ability to item lock and supporter lock is good it's weird that you don't really have a choice as to which one you're doing you know you're it's just a little chaotic you're either going to supporter lock or item lock you could pair it with glimwood tangle to try and influence the way that you flip but it is uh it is an interesting attack nonetheless i don't think that an attack quite like that has ever existed in the pokemon tcg so a very neat little Viloplume card hollow rare there Vespa Queen, the Queen Bee Pokemon, has 120 hit points. Its Honey Rush attack does 60 damage times the amount of Honey item cards you reveal from your hand. This attack does 60 damage for each card you revealed in this way. You can have up to four Honey item cards in your deck in standard format, meaning you could do 240 damage for just one energy. With the new Choice Belt tool card, you could do... 270 damage for just one grass energy. Of course, that does require getting all of those honey cards into your hand, but a pretty neat little card. Nonetheless, honey is a new item card that is a very funny healing card that we'll talk about a little bit later in the discussion. Verizian V has got 200 hit points in the ability Grassland Wind, which reads your Pokemon with grass energy attached cannot be affected by special conditions. Heal any special condition from those Pokemon. And its attack, Emerald Blade for two grass and a colorless energy does 200 damage, with the drawback being this Pokemon cannot attack during your next turn. How many, how many Pokemon... 
have this drawback to their attack. It just feels like that that effect just gets copy and pasted onto about 50% of Pokemon V cards, it honestly feels like. What's interesting about this Verizian is that it calls back to Verizian EX with its Verdant Wind ability, which reads each of your Pokemon that has any grass energy attached to it can't be affected by any special conditions. Wow, it's like the same exact thing, except it is called Grassland Wind instead of Verdant Wind. Maybe it will get the Verdant Wind translation. That would be pretty cool. I would like that. Now, that Verizian EX was played in a lot of decks because it could accelerate energy into play. This one is an attacker itself. I do think that this ability is very strong, though. has a nice history in the Pokemon TCG. And this Verizian could certainly see play in grass decks, especially if special conditions become big. All right, I've seen a lot of hate directed at this sparkling Heatran, and I don't know why. He's beautiful. If you think Heatran is ugly, we're not friends. You meet this Heatran on the battlefield and tell him, tell this Heatran that he's ugly to his face. I, I literally dare you to. Sparkling Pokemon, you can only have one of them in your deck, so you have to choose carefully. This Sparkling Heatran has a nice 160 hit points and the Raging Bomber attack for a fire and two colorless energy. It does 70 damage times the number of damage counters on this Pokemon. Now, getting damage counters onto your Sparkling Heatran is not too difficult considering that Magma Basin was just printed. Magma Basin is a stadium card that accelerates fire energy from your discard pile to your bench fire type Pokemon, and it places two damage counters on that Pokemon every time you use it. So if you use Magma Basin to accelerate fire energy onto Heatran twice, it'll have four damage counters on it. With four damage counters on it, Heatran's going to be doing 280 damage. So I really like that. I think that it's a solid attacker. It would take a couple of turns to power up. But if you use Magma Basin twice, you're going to be one-hit KOing most Pokemon V-Star. So I really like this card. And what's different about Sparkling Pokemon as opposed to Pokemon Prism Star or anything like that is that they don't go to the loss zone when they get knocked out. So if your sparkling Heatran gets knocked out, you can just recover it, put it back on the bench, and charge it up to attack again. So I think the sparkling Heatran's very good, could definitely see play in fire-type decks, is a potent attacker and an absolutely beautiful Pokemon card. We've got a brand new character rare Chandelure featuring the Elite Four Ghost Trainer Chantal. Absolutely love this artwork, and I totally didn't have to ask Twitch chat what this trainer's name was. Totally had that right off the top of my noggin. And look at Chandelure helping everybody out, just throwing books onto the floor. I'm sure that Chantal really appreciates that. Chandelure's got the Mountain Burner ability, which reads, once during your turn when you play this card from your hand to evolve a Pokemon, you may discard the top three cards of your opponent's deck. So a cool mill ability. You could use Scoop Up Net to recycle it and mill a bunch of cards, and then it does 90 damage for a fire and a colorless. This new Pyroar is pretty cool. Its ability, Scorching Aura, says put four damage counters on your opponent's burned Pokemon instead of two. So this Pyroar could help you to fix some math in your deck that inflicts burn. Say you're playing a Salazzle Butterfree deck. Butterfree's ability leaves the defending Pokemon poisoned, burned, and confused with Salazzle's attack. It does 270 damage, and then with the poison and the burn damage, it adds up to 300. If you have Pyroar in play... It's 320 damage, which is going to be one-hit KOing most Pokemon VMAX, so that's pretty cool. There are also some Burn-style decks that exist in Gym Leader Challenge format, and this Pyroar could be 
a useful addition to that archetype as well. Its Fire Fang attack for a fire and two colorless energy does 90 damage. You flip a coin of heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. So it effectively will do 130 damage if you inflict the burn. Starmie V is a basic water type Pokemon with 190 hit points. Its swift attack does 50 damage. This attack's damage not affected by weakness, resistance, or any other effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. And then energy spiral, 50 damage times the number of energy attached to your opponent's Pokemon in play. That kind of attack would be extremely powerful against turbo dark decks when the new dark V star comes out, right? That Dark Rye V Star does more damage times the amount of darkness energy in play. So, this Starmie would be a great counter to that. This attack is also very good against Shadow Rider Calrex V Max decks, as the Max Geist attack does more damage for the amount of psychic energy you have in play. So, this Starmie V could be a useful card for countering specific kinds of decks that load tons of energy in play, like the new Dark Rye V Star and Shadow Rider. Hisuian Basculin is absolutely amazing. We've got the return of free attacks in the Battle Region set. Hisuian Basculin has the free attack Schooling, which allows you to search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon and play them to your bench. Getting your basic Pokemon into play early is incredibly important in the Pokemon trading card game right now. And what's so good about this Basculin having this attack for free is that you can retreat a Pokemon into Basculin on the first turn of the game and use the attack. One of the problems with these kinds of attacks when they cost one energy is that you usually have an issue getting that Pokemon into the active spot on the first turn of the game to use the attack but with the ability and flexibility to retreat into Hisuian Basculin, I see this attack as being very impactful and a great resource for single prize decks and setup decks in the future. It's also going to be absolutely incredible in water type gym leader challenge decks. We've seen these kinds of attacks see play before. Alolan Vulpix, right, is the prime example. Alolan Vulpix was used for its beacon attack throughout the Sun and Moon era, which allowed you to search your deck for up to two Pokemon, reveal them, and put them into your hand. So a slightly different attack where Basculin only gets basic Pokemon. Alolan Vulpix can get evolutions, but Basculin puts them straight to the bench. I can't tell you how many times I've used Alolan Vulpix and its beacon attack and wish that I could put the basic Pokemon that I'm getting straight to the bench. So it's a really powerful card. Hisuian Basculin evolves into Hisuian Basculegion, who has the grudging dive attack, 30 damage plus 90 more damage if any of your Pokemon were knocked out by damage from an attack during your opponent's last turn. So 120 damage for just one water energy. I really like that this setup Pokemon can evolve into a valid attacker with the new Choice Belt tool card. You can boost that Grudging Dive's 120 damage to a respectable 150 damage, which almost two hit KOs most Pokemon VMAX. So a nice evolution for Hisuian Basculin. I think that Hisuian Basculin is so good though that it might just find its way into decks as a setup Pokemon without even including Hisuian Basculegion. And it confuses. I totally missed that. That's cool. Sparkling Greninja is a new sparkling Pokemon that despite being a Greninja, is a basic Pokemon, just like the old Gold Star Pokemon from the early EX eras in the mid-2000s. Sparkling Greninja has 130 hit points, and the Sparkling Rule means you can only have one Sparkling Pokemon in your deck, so you have to choose carefully. 
Its concealed card ability is incredibly strong. It reads once during your turn, you may discard an energy card from your hand, then draw two cards. So this Greninja could see play in any type of deck that plays energy because all you have to do is discard an energy card. It doesn't have to be basic either. It could be any type. It could be a double turbo energy for all I care, right? It could be any kind of energy, and you get to draw two cards. So I could see this Greninja see him play in a ton of decks. 130 hit points for a basic Pokemon is just a good, respectable amount of HP as well. Any deck that has extra energy or likes to get energy in the discard pile, I think will love playing this Greninja. And if you happen to be pairing this Greninja with an engine that accelerates water energy like Frostmoth, you could access its Moonlight Shuriken attack for two water and a colorless energy. You discard two energy from this Pokemon and do 90 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. The first of the Hisuian starters, Hisuian Typhlosion V and Hisuian Typhlosion V-Star. These guys have got some incredible artwork. Look at that gorgeous card. Hisuian Typhlosion V's Singe Attack can be used for free, and it burns the defending Pokemon. Nice way to rack up some damage early on. It's Shivering Flames Attack for two Psychic and a Colorless. Does 120 damage, and you get to choose a card from your opponent's hand without looking, reveal the card, and have your opponent shuffle it back into their deck. Hisuian Typhlosion V evolves into Hisuian Typhlosion V-Star, with its hollow flame attack for two psychic and a colorless energy, does 180 damage, and you get to place three damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you like. It's a little bit of an expensive attack for a psychic type attacker. You could accelerate energy onto Hisuian Typhlosion V Star with Shadow Rider Calrex or something like that. And then it's Shadow Roaster V Star Power Attack. Reads. If your opponent's active Pokemon has four damage counters on it, it's knocked out. For just one Psychic Energy, you get to instantly KO any Pokemon that has four damage counters on it and happens to be in the active spot. Kind of reminds me of Yveltal GX's GX attack. If you guys remember all the way back to the olden Sun and Moon era, right? Definitely got some Yveltal GX vibes going on. Definitely a cool card. There are ways to put damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon. Of course, the Intellion engine comes to mind with the quick shooting ability. Just two quick shootings. And you could use Shadow Roaster to instantly KO any Pokemon. Or just, uh, you know, use the Hollow Flame attack to place three damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you like. Will Hisuian Typhlosion V-Star be better than other Psychic-type attackers like Mew V-Max or Shadow Rider Calrex or Whimsicott V-Star? There's a lot of competition there for, you know, Psychic-type attackers. So I am curious to see if Hisuian Typhlosion V-Star can stand up to those other powerful psychic type attackers that already exist. And with a darkness type weakness, which is the same darkness weakness that Mew VMAX has, Hisuian Typhlosion V-Star could get caught in the weakness crosshairs that are surely to be a thing with this new battle region set. This Miss Magius is interesting. It's ominous chant attack for one psychic energy. Reads, your opponent reveals their hand. If your opponent has four or more cards in their hand, choose cards until they have only three cards remaining. Then your opponent shuffles the cards you chose back into their deck. It's not quite as good as Persians make them pay attack, right? If anybody remembers, if your opponent has four or more cards in their hand, they reveal their hand, and you get to discard cards you find there until your opponent has four cards in their hand. That's much more powerful Control decks would use the make them pay attack to make them pay. And also discard valuable resources. Putting them back into the deck isn't quite as good. Miss Magius's Psy Beam attack for a Psychic and a Colorless does 50 damage, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. I do really love this new Psychic-type Gallade. It has 160 hit points, and its ability 
Buddy Catch reads, once during your turn, you may search your deck for one supporter card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. It's Helix Cutter attack for a Psychic and two colorless energy, moves an energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon, and does 160 damage. All in all, I think this is a powerful stage two card and could definitely see play in psychic type gym leader challenge decks. That buddy catch ability is the same ability that we see on Dragonite. The fast call ability, and Dragonite is one of the best Pokemon cards in dragon type gym leader challenge decks so giving psychic type decks access to the same ability is very good obviously in gym leader challenge format galate is going to have to compete for space with guard of war but if you wanted to play this card in standard formats there is a very good curlia right that gets other curlia into play so that's something to keep in mind as well right there is the curlia from chilling rain with the mirage step attack for one psychic energy you get to search for three curlia and put them onto your bench so whenever you think about pokemon like Gallade that evolve from curlia you gotta you know take that curlia into consideration now single prize attackers that do like 160 damage and our stage two Pokemon are not very good right now. If you're a single prize deck, you pretty much need to be able to one hit KO Pokemon V Max in order to be relevant, like Rapid Strike Malamar or the Mad Party deck. So I do think that Gallade will be a better fit in Gym Leader Challenge format than Standard, though you could build a fun little Gallade deck in Standard format. Last night when this set was leaking on Twitter, I saw a bunch of mistranslations of this card. At first it seemed insane, but I think as the translation got more refined, we realized that it's just not that good. diancy has got a beautiful artwork though, and it's Princess Curtain ability reads, as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, whenever your opponent plays a supporter card from their hand, prevent all effects of that card done to your bench. Basic Pokemon. Now, you can see how this is almost a really strong ability, but it's just really bad, actually, because Diancy has to be in the active spot, and it only prevents boss's orders done to your basic Pokemon. Its attack for one colorless energy does 20 damage and draws you two cards. It could still be situationally useful, maybe almost in some kinds of decks that really want to prevent their basic Pokemon from getting bossed up, and then it's spike draw attack, maybe with a choice belt could do 50, which could maybe almost be relevant. It's just missing some key pieces. I think the original translation we saw of this card was that it didn't have to be active, and it wasn't just basic Pokemon. So obviously, that would be just broken right which would be uh which would be insane but having to be in the active spot and only preventing bosses orders on your bench basic pokemon definitely limits the viability of this card though i'm not going to write it completely off maybe there is a deck out there somewhere that appreciates this card weird ear also has a new character rare artwork there super dope its ability fast pace lets you draw a card once during your turn, and then extra sensory does 40 damage. Plus, if you have the same number of cards in your hand as your opponent, does 80 more damage. Not a super great card. Look at him. Rhyperior. He's huge. 190 HP. What an absolute mountain of a Pokemon. It's attack Earth Wrecker for one fighting energy does 50 damage, plus you discard the top card of your deck. If it's an energy, this attack does 100 more damage, then attach that discarded energy to this Pokemon. Rock Tackle does 180 damage, and this Pokemon does 30 damage to itself. Now, when we're looking at stage two Pokemon in standard format, 
you pretty much have to compare them to Torterra. If they're not at least as good as Torterra from Brilliant Stars, they're pretty much going to be unplayable in standard format because Torterra is just the best single prize stage to attacker printed in recent history, and it might just almost be playable in standard format. Pretty much all other attacking stage two Pokemon are irrelevant in standard format. So we're gonna look at this card in the context of Gym Leader Challenge format, where various stage two Pokemon can actually exist and see play. In Gym Leader Challenge format, this card has 190 hit points, that's super good. It's some of the highest HP you're going to see in Gym Leader Challenge format. Its attack, Earth Wrecker, does 50 damage and could accelerate a, an energy to itself. Could do 150 damage for just one energy. 150 damage is great damage output. Now, stacking your deck in Gym Leader Challenge format isn't the easiest thing to do. You could pair this with Lunatone, though. All right, and Lunatone allows you to look at the top. Yeah, here we go. Lunatone's Premonition ability. Once during your turn, you may look at the top two cards of your deck and put them back on top of your deck in any order. So you could pair this card with Lunatone, right, to help rearrange your deck in some way. You could also play Switching Cups, right, to rearrange the top card of your deck in some way. Obviously, if you were to play this card in standard format, you could pair Rhyperior with the Oranguru, right, uh, to stack your deck. But in Gym Leader Challenge format, you can only play one type of Pokemon in your deck, so it's not an option in GLC. Its Rock Tackle attack does do 180 damage and 30 to itself. 180 for four is not bad. And you could accelerate energy onto your Rhyperior with Colossal, which does see play in a lot of fighting type Gym Leader Challenge decks. All in all, Rhyperior is a cool Pokemon, and it could see some play in Gym Leader Challenge. You know, I don't hate this Hippowdon in Gym Leader Challenge format. Its attack, Sand Press, does 180 damage for a fighting and three colorless energy, with the downside being you have to discard two energy from this Pokemon. In Gym Leader Challenge format, you could pair this Hippowdon with Colossal to help get some extra energy into play. It's also buff padding compatible, which is one of my favorite cards to play in fighting type Gym Leader Challenge decks since it gives your Pokemon plus 50 hit points and a 200 hit point Hippowdon doing 180 damage. It's not too shabby. Sparkling Halucha is the new fighting type sparkling Pokemon. I do love Halucha. Halucha is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. I do have to say I like its regular colorway better than the shiny one, but it's all good. It's got 90 hit points, so it's level ball searchable. And its ability, Big Match, reads if this Pokemon is on your bench, your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon VMAX. So the VMAX Slayer, showing up just in time for Pokemon to stop printing Pokemon... VMAX. Cool. All right, but you know what? Pokemon VMAX are going to be around for a while. It will be years until they eventually rotate out of standard format, which means that this Halucha could definitely see play to help decks reach that 330, 320 mark, right, to one-hit KO Pokemon VMAX. Could play this card in mad party decks and decks that play the were madam right to help those decks hit the numbers that they need to hit in order to knock out pokemon v max you're pretty much never going to use spinning kick it's kind of just there is like a, all right we know we need to give you some attack but let's just make it really bad it's just here for the ability now cards like this have seen play Right, if we take a look at Diancy Prism Star, Diancy Prism Star was one of the most popular fighting type Prism Star Pokemon. Was it the only fighting type Prism Star Pokemon? It's definitely the best fighting type Prism Star Pokemon. I'm pretty sure it's the only one, right? Diancy Prism Star's Princess Cheers increase your fighting type Pokemon's attacks by 20, just explicitly better than Halucha. But if Halucha gets knocked out, 
You can retrieve it from the discard pile and put it onto your bench. If Diancy got knocked out, it just went to the lost zone. So it's a pretty good card. I don't like that it's limited only to Pokemon V Max. I wish that it was Pokemon V in general so that it could be applicable to Pokemon V Star, but I'll take what I can get. The new Hisuian Decidui V and Decidui V Star are pretty cool. I have to say, I, I do love the Hisuian Decidui character design. I picked Rowlet as my starter when I played through Legends Arceus. Unfortunately, my Decidui was so terrible in the game that I eventually, yeah, put him in the, uh, I put him in the daycare center, okay? Yeah, wherever, you know, in, in the equivalent of boxes, all right? I put him, I, I benched him, all right? <laughs> we ben I benched him. He was so bad, bro. He was so bad. Hisuian Decidueye V has 220 hit points. It's a basic Pokemon with two attacks. Mountain Hunt for one fighting energy. Allows you to search your deck for up to two cards and put them into your hand. The perfect thing to do before you get them Marnied to the bottom of your deck, am I right? And then it's point blank shot attack for a fighting and two colorless energy. Reads this attack's damage not affected by any effects on the defending Pokemon and it does 100 damage. Pretty interesting first attack for just one energy. It does remind me of Decidueye GX's Hollow Hunt GX, which put three cards from your discard pile into your hand. Looks like Decidueye likes hunting for things and helping everybody out with its useful one energy attacks. So I do like that. It's a nice attack if you happen to keep your hand, but I have found that I almost always get Marnied when I use attacks like that. And then Hisuian Decidueye V-Star has 270 hit points. Its Somersault Feather attack does 160 damage, and you can discard up to three energy cards from your hand. This attack does 30 more damage for each energy you discarded in this way. So if you discard three energy from your hand, you're going to be doing 250 damage with a Choice Belt attached. You could do 280 damage with Hisuian Decidueye V-Star. Its V-Star power ability, Winds and Clouds Star, reads during your turn, you may draw cards from your deck until you have eight cards in your hand. That is a very good ability. Filling your hand to eight, I've got no complaints about that. The question is, will you use your V-Star power in your deck to do something that a supporter could just do. Cleavor is a fighting type Pokemon with a new character rare artwork. It's Lumberjack Hack Attack for two colorless energy. Allows you to flip two coins. If both of them are heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now knocked out. So if you're feeling lucky, instant KO for just a double turbo energy. And then Frenzied Tackle. 120 damage. This Pokemon does 30 damage to itself. This card is not very good. Overquill is a very cool Pokemon, I have to say. I really like this Pokemon's design. It's it's pretty dope. He's just a spiky boy. What's not to like? It's got a free attack, Intense Poison, which leaves your opponent's active Pokemon poison, but instead of placing one damage counter on that Pokemon between turns, you place five damage counters on it. That damage can rack up very quickly, as we've seen with Galarian Weezing. It's also got the Sticker Quill attack for a dark and a colorless energy, does 50 damage, and the defending Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. A cute little card, but probably not that great. Sound the alarms, chat, because Mew V Max is finally dead. I was a little concerned that maybe Darkrai V Star couldn't do the job by itself, but it turns out they decided to give us. The first ever good Mighty Anna card, and Mighty Anna absolutely destroys Mew V Max. If Beedrill wasn't enough, which it clearly hasn't been, Mighty Anna should surely do the job. Its ability Hustle Bark reads if your opponent has any Pokemon V Max in play, this Pokemon's attacks cost three colorless less. 
In order to make a card that can compete with Mew VMAX, they had to make it do 160 damage for free, bro. <laughs> they had to print a single prize Pokemon that one hit KOs Mew for free. That was the only fix to, to help counter Mew VMAX. Its wild tackle attack does 160 damage and 50 damage to itself. With Choice Belt, you can get around all sorts of Oracorio, Big Charm, Shenanigans, or anything like that. So I don't want to hear it, okay? Choice Belt fixes all the math. Mighty Enna is going to be awesome. And just to show you how bad every other Mighty Enna card has ever been, they are all terrible. I mean, not a single one of these cards had ever seen play in the history of the Pokemon trading card game. I mean, this is like what Mighty Anna typically does right here. Like, look how bad this card is, dude. I mean, I'm talking like even for Team Up, why is there a card that is this bad? Finally, Mighty Anna getting the respect it deserves. And what's hilarious is that this card is so good that it could even see play in Gym Leader Challenge format, despite the fact that Pokemon VMAX are illegal in Gym Leader Challenge format, because 160 damage for three colorless energy just ain't bad. Hisuian Samurai V and Hisuian Samurai V Star. Hisuian Samurai V has 220 hit points. It's zigzag drop attack for one darkness energy. Allows you to discard up to two Pokemon tools attached to your opponent's Pokemon in play. And then Shadow Slash for three darkness energy does 180 damage and you discard one energy from this Pokemon, uh, you're never really going to use any of those attacks. Hisuian Samurai V-Star has 270 hit points, and its Merciless Blade Attack for two Darkness Energy does 110 damage. If your opponent's active Pokemon has any damage counters on it, this attack does 110 more damage. You could use Galarian Zigzagoon's Headbutt Tantrum, to fulfill this attack's requirement to put a damage counter on it. Or you could use this cute little Absol with its sweeping Calamity attack, which does 10 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. Some nice synergy there. It's Claw Rend also does 50 plus 70 if they have any damage counters on it. So the Suian Samurai clearly pairs with the Absol, but I think that Galarian Zigzagoon will probably be a better pairing. And then its ability... Moon Cutting Star, which is a V-Star power, reads once during your turn, you may put four damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Very cool. I like that. That is a strong ability. If you pair Hisuian Samurai V-Star with like Quick Shooting Intellion or something, you know, you could really knock out some bench dudes with the uh, Moon Cutting Star of ability. You could also use it to just fix math, right? You could also use it to fulfill the Merciless Blade requirement to get some damage counters on the... Hello, where'd you go? Okay, yes. You could use it to fulfill the Merciless Blade requirement to get some damage counters on the defending Pokemon. If you use Moon Cutting Star, put four damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon. Use Merciless Blade, which does 220, plus the four is 260, plus a Choice Belt. That's 290 damage. It's pretty good. Now, what's crazy is that you know, Fusion Strike Energy completely stops all of this kind of stuff, so you're never going to be able to place damage counters on Mew VMAX. Moving on. What's hilariously depressing about this card is that it doesn't have an easy way to knock out Mew VMAX because of the Fusion Strike Energy that prevents the abilities. You can't headbutt tantrum a Pokemon with a Fusion Strike energy on it. You can't use your Moon Cutting Star ability. You're only doing base 110 damage. A Darkness type Pokemon that doesn't even one hit KO Mew V Max consistently. Like, I'm sorry, Samurai, but what's what's the point? Garchomp V has got one extremely gooberific artwork and one extremely based. Artwork. 
I think that if I were to ever play this card, I would be, I, I could not. I'd have to invest into the character rares. I don't think I could, I don't think I could sleeve this fella up and put and put it in my deck seriously, no. But this artwork, though, Garchomp looking mighty fine, okay. Garchomp V has 200 hit points. It's a basic Pokemon. It's Dragon Claw attack does 120 damage. And Sonic Strike for a water. Two fighting and a colorless requires that you discard three energy from this Pokemon. But you get to do 220 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So 220 damage snipe. Obviously very strong. However, powering up a Pokemon that has less than, you know, 250 hit points or whatever, you know with four energy just to do 220 damage in today's day and age it's probably not gonna fly mill tank i love mill tank mill tank is such a cool pokemon and i love that this mill tank is running because you know what mill tank is faster than you would expect okay i don't know almost anything non pokemon cards okay i don't know anything about like video game stuff i just i just don't but i do know that mill tank has got a speed of 100 base speed of 100 he's a quick dude he's kind of fast <laughs> so i love that mill tank is running yeah what a speedy fella way faster than you would expect mill tank to be Mill Tank's got an ability, Miraculous Body, which prevents all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon V. Wow, that would be pretty cool if they didn't give Mew V Max the absolute counter to all abilities like that. And then its attack, Kickabout, for two colorless energy, does 10 damage plus 20 more damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So if your opponent has five bench Pokemon, you're going to be doing 110 damage for two colorless energy. It's a cool ability. I mean, it's like Altaria, right? But these kinds of abilities just haven't been very good. It's like Altaria. It's like Decidueye. It's on a basic. Miltank just should be good. But they gave so many Pokemon VMAX counters to this, right? I mean, Duralodon VMAX has a built-in counter. Any deck that plays Intellion has, a, you know, a natural built-in counter. Mew VMAX has got a built-in counter. I just get a little concerned that maybe there will be too many decks that have a counter to this kind of ability, but you have to give it to Miltank. Single Strike Urshifu VMAX has a built-in counter. Yes. You have to give it to Miltank. Miltank is definitely the best kind of barrier Pokemon that exists in the Pokemon TCG right now because it's a basic it does some respectable damage output it's got a nice amount of hp consider the following it's got like as much hp as altaria right how much hp altaria got it it's got the same amount of hit points as altaria and it's gonna do more damage on average more than likely than altaria so it's kind of just better than Altaria, right? And uh, it's a basic. So I think that uh, this Miltank card could see play, especially if Mew VMAX gets hated out of the equation just enough. On to the trainers. We've got the new Turbo Stall item card that you can only use if you go second and only on the first turn. I absolutely despise this kind of card design. I wish they would just stop it. Just stop printing cards like this, okay? Battle VIP Pass is ridiculous, and I absolutely loathe that that card is seeing play right now, that the game is so fast that it actually makes sense to play that card. Now, this card should never be good because it has even more of a drawback than Battle VIP Pass. Battle VIP Pass, you can use whether you go first or second. This card ends your turn and can only be used on the first turn of the game if you go second. This card should never see play, but you know what? It, it probably will. I love this card. 
Honey is a new item card. It reads, choose one of your Pokemon and then flip a coin until you get Tails. For each heads, heal 40 damage from that Pokemon. This card is basically better than Lucky Ice Pop, right? Because Lucky Ice Pop essentially gets played like that. Even though you don't have to just flip until you get Tails. I don't know about you guys, but pretty much every time I play Lucky Ice Pop, I flip until I get Tails, right? You're always flipping until you get Tails, right? That's pretty much that's pretty much how it goes. So with this card, it heals twice as much as Lucky Ice Pop, but that's true. It doesn't guarantee a heal. Lucky Ice Pop guarantees a heal of 20 damage. This card does not. But I do think that Honey could see play in those like crazy tanky heal decks like the Stone Journer V Max deck. It certainly could. As if you flip like three heads, I mean that's like 120 damage heal. It's pretty uh pretty crazy. Canceling Cologne is an item card that reads your opponent's active Pokemon has no abilities until the end of this turn. This item card has just a few too many limitations, I think, to be truly powerful. It does do cheeky things like turn off Dragapult's Infiltrator ability, which is situationally useful in Gym Leader Challenge format, but in Standard format, is there really going to be anything that you're trying to turn off just to the active, right? It's only the active, and it's only during your turn. You could use this card to turn off Duralodon VMAX's ability, but aren't you better off just putting a path to the peak in play? I think that this card, again, just has too many limitations, not going to be as useful as a card like Path to the peak you could play this card as a way to counter mill tank i hate it see why do they always make it so easy to counter cards like this yeah that's that's annoying you could use it to counter mill tank as an item card if you wanted to get through it but uh yeah all in all i don't expect this card to see much play silene is a new supporter from the Hasui region. You flip two coins for each heads, choose a card from your discard pile, and put it on top of your deck in any order. I don't expect this supporter to really see any play in standard format. Like, maybe in some sort of really funky control deck, this supporter could see some play. But in... You know, in, in a standard attacking deck, absolutely not. This supporter could see play in Gym Leader Challenge format as it does something that no other card does. It just gives you an opportunity to recover some cards that are not easy to recover. You could use it to recover Double Dragon Energy in Gym Leader Challenge formats or other useful resources. I think Silene may find a specific use somewhere, but it definitely won't be a supporter that sees a ton of play. Roxanne. You can only play this card if your opponent has three or less prize cards left. Both players shuffle their hands into their decks. You draw six cards, and your opponent draws two. It's kind of like Ace Trainer. Ace Trainer could only be played if you had more prize cards left than your opponent. And then both players shuffle their hands into their decks. You draw six. Your opponent draws three. Ace Trainer is easier to play than Roxanne because Roxanne can only be played in the back half of the game or after turn three. Uh, <laughs> can only be played during the back half of the game. If your opponent has three prize cards left or less, right? And Roseanne is more, or Roxanne, Roxanne is more disruptive than Ace Trainer was, but has more limitations on its time to be played. 
Limiting your opponent to two cards is cool and all, but Mew VMAX has Genesect with its Fusion Strike System ability, so who cares? Limiting your opponent to two cards is pretty good, though, and I could see Roxanne seeing play, especially in a deck like Intellion that could search it out at just the right time. However, opening Roxanne in your opening hand, right, will feel absolutely terrible, and you will be upset that you don't have a supporter that just draws you cards on turn one, like Marnie. So all in all, Marnie is just better than Roxanne, but Roxanne could see play as like a one of index that can search it out at the right time. Commando. Discard all cards from your hand except one. Then you get to draw four cards. This card is not super powerful. It's interesting. It could see play in decks that want to get certain resources into the discard pile. However, having to limit your hand down to just one card before drawing four is not exactly as much of a payoff as I feel like I would need. If it said discard your hand down to one and then draw six, I'd be into it, right? Because you could end with like a, a seven card hand, which would be dope. But ending with a five card hand and having to discard your, yeah, I don't, I don't really think I'm into it. We've been begging and waiting for the reprint of Tropical Beach. Oh, since 2011, we've been waiting for this moment. And it's it's not beach, but it's it's the closest thing we got, okay? It's like, it's, <laughs> it's like budget Tropical Beach. It's like we got Tropical Beach at home, okay? No, you can't have any Tropical Beach, okay? I just bought a 12-pack of Tropical Beach at the house. And this is what your mom whips out. It's Jubilife Village. Once during each player's turn, that player may shuffle their hand into their deck and draw five cards. Your turn ends. Now, comparing this card directly to Tropical Beach, Tropical Beach allows you to fill your hand to seven. In some situations, this card would be better than fill your hand to seven. Sometimes your hand gets a little bit jammed, but I think objectively filling your hand to seven is better sh than shuffle draw five. However, Jubilee Village is uh, is what we have, okay? And it will be useful in some decks as a bonus consistency card, which I do really like. Even if your opponent Marnies you after you use Jubilife Village, that will feel pretty bad, but it's better than dead drawing if that is your, uh, you know, if that's the alternative. I think that Jubilife Village could certainly see play in Gym Leader Challenge format because you could play both Tropical Beach and Jubilife Village in Gym Leader Challenge format, giving your Gym Leader Challenge deck an even bigger boost in consistency. So I definitely dig that. And the stadium selection in standard format right now is incredibly poor. So really, I'll take whatever I can get, especially for single prize decks, setup decks, things like that, Jubilee Village. I wish it was Shuffle Draw 6, but I'll take Shuffle Draw 5. So it appears as if the Lucario V and Lucario V-Star and the Dark Rai V and the Dark Rai V-Star will not be in the Battle Region set. Instead, we're going to get those in separate V-Star decks. I'm really stoked about both of these. I'm going to be ordering some of the V-Star decks to open on stream, and then we're definitely going to build Lucario and Dark Rai decks, as I think that they are both very good. Lucario V has 210 hit points. Its Crush Punch Attack does 50 damage, and you get to discard a special energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. That could be quite good against Arceus V-Star, right? Since Arceus V-Star will probably lean very heavily on double turbo energy, also weak to fighting. And then Psycho 
and then Cyclone Kick does 120 damage for a Fighting and 2 Colorless Energy. Lucario V-Star has 270 hit points and 2 attacks. Its first attack, Fighting Knuckle for a Fighting and 2 Colorless Energy, does 120 damage. Plus, if your opponent's active Pokemon is a Pokemon V, it does 120 more damage. So it is just like Victini VMAX, except it is on a two-prize Pokemon V-Star that happens to be hitting for a very good weakness, considering that Arceus V-Star is going to be weak to fighting. The new Darkrai V-Star is not weak to fighting. It's weak to grass. Okay, but the Arceus V-Star is weak to fighting, so that's big, and uh, it does one-hit KO Arceus, so it's got that going for it. And you could pair Lucario V-Star with an attacker like Mighty Yenna to easily counter Psychic-type Pokemon VMAX like Mew VMAX, who might give your Lucario V-Star some trouble. Lucario V-Star's V-Star power is Aura Star for fighting in a colorless energy. It does 70 damage times the number of energy attached to your opponent's Pokemon. So again, this attack will be very good against Turbo, Dark Rite, V-Star decks, Shadow Rider, Calrex, VMAX decks, any decks that load a ton of energy into play. Lucario V-Star will pretty much be able to one-hit KO once during the game with a big Aura Star. Lucario V-Star is also going to have access to the new Gutsy Pickaxe item card that reads, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a fighting energy, attach it to one of your benched Pokemon. Otherwise, reveal it and put it into your hand. You could pair the pickaxe with Primate Wisdom Orangaroo or Switching Cups to guarantee that you're going to have a fighting energy on top of the deck to accelerate into play. You could also use the new Double Turbo Energy to help power up Lucario V-Star's Fighting Knuckle attack. The difference between 240 damage and 220 damage is not really significant. You're probably still going to be one-hit KOing most Pokemon V, and you're still going to be one-hit KOing Arceus V-Star. And then I think I speak for most of us here when I say that we are all extremely excited about the new Darkrai V-Star card. Turbo Dark is back, baby! I can't wait. Darkrai V has 210 hit points. It's a basic Pokemon with two attacks. Dark Wind for darkness and a colorless energy does 50 damage. And Dark Hole for two dark and a colorless energy does 130 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. Dark Rai V's main job is going to be to evolve into this guy, Dark Rai V Star, with 270 hit points. Its Dark Pulse attack, like other Dark Rai's before it, does 30 damage plus 30 more damage for each darkness energy attached to your Pokemon. Dark Rai getting Dark Pulse, very dark type Pokemon. Thing for it to have, considering that both Greninja and Zorark Tag Team GX and Darkrai EX from Breakpoint both had a similar attack. Very cool to see that revived with Darkrai V-Star. Darkrai V-Star's V-Star power, Star Abyss, is an ability that reads, once during your turn, you may search your discard pile for up to two item cards and then put them into your hand. This is extremely significant, considering that Dark Patch is getting reprinted. Dark Patch is an item card that allows you to attach a basic darkness energy from your discard pile to one of your bench darkness Pokemon. So essentially, you'll get to play six Dark Patch during a game to flood your board with darkness energy, so that you can use Dark Pulse for some serious damage. 
You could also pair Darkrai V-Star with Moltres, right? Galarian Moltres has the Dire Flame Wings ability, which allows you to accelerate a darkness energy from your discard pile to Galarian Moltres. You could also pair it with the single prize Galarian Moltres with its Malevolent Charge ability that allows you to attach two extra darkness energy from your hand to the Moltres when you put it from your hand onto the bench. Another cool application for the Star Abyss ability is you could get two Crushing Hammer with it so that you could play six Crushing Hammer during a game Personally, I think that that's my favorite application. What's not to like about six Crushing Hammer, dude? Awesome. You know what's better than four Crushing Hammer? Six Crushing Hammer. Or, uh, you know, you could go fetch some boring consistency cards out of your discard pile. There's a whole bunch of different applications of what you could get with Star Abyss. I really like this power. It kind of reminds me of Sableye from Dark Explorers with its Junk Hunt attack, right? A cool little callback there. Sableye from Dark Explorers had the Junk Hunt attack, which allowed you to put two item cards from your discard pile into your hand. This Sableye saw a lot of play with the original Dark Rai EX. So we're kind of bringing that back in the form of Dark Rai V-Star, which has junk hunt built in a very powerful card and it's a darkness type pokemon which hopefully means that we'll finally get to kill off mu v max once and for all and that's it for my battle region review thank you so much for watching this video and huge thanks to pokebeach.com it's the resource i use for all of my pokemon trading card game news and i highly recommend it the link to pokebeach will be in the description below if you like this video make sure to subscribe to the channel and check me out on twitch twitch.tv slash tricky gym where i stream live pokemon trading card game content just like this every single weekday now you all have a great day peace Thank you